in Russia, you see a lot of fights in public and it's normal. Like people just fight. <laughs> that's that's the that's the cons of it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, like how until now Putin is still the president and everyone loves Putin. Everyone loves yeah. Putin. Yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone loves Putin. And 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 and, and uh, I I I talk to my friends, my Russian friends, and they say that you know the perception that the Russians have on Putin is you know. If we lose Putin, Ooh, the world is not going to be afraid of us. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to episode so yet four. Yep. Right? Four, right? Yep. Guys, come on, guys. It's episode four, guys. Come on. Yeah. So welcome to episode four of our Fix Collab we still have the side behind the scene yes okay that's it is uh, from now on it's going to be fixed collab behind the scene okay. right okay episode 4 of fixed collab behind the scene today as usual you have me roy and you have our studio akin with us today so yeah today we're going to talk something interesting we're going to talk about military technology So military technology, yeah, it's fun, fun. It's crazy. It's insane. It's could be end of the world apocalypse. It can, right? But not gonna doubt. Military technology has always been, has always been the forefront of any technologies around the world. All right. Do you agree, Akin? Yeah. Right. In the in the yeah yeah and <clears throat> this topic is something that is close to Hakim's heart. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're definitely going to learn a lot of things here. All right guys. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So what are your thoughts on generally uh, military technology currently that we mm. are uh, at the, mm. the level that the whole world is at? Mm-mm. I mean, when we talking about military technology, I think I think we we are referring to much bigger. Uh, if we're looking like defense industry, so yeah, basically when we look at defense industry, it's basically industry where majority of the client is actually government. Okay, so when we are talking about the mid, I mean, probably 90% of the client, the client be uh, clientele base is actually government. And when we are talking about government, there's a lot of money that going inside it, right? So defense yeah. is one of the most critical uh, factor in any country, and thus uh, putting a lot of money in it, and also as well as resources in it, is uh, one of the priority in 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 country budgeting and finance as well. So the first, I mean, if you ask me, the first thing is this industry is really big and is. It's a, a lot of uh, cash flow coming in into the industry. That's the first thing. And then, as a whole, I mean, if you're looking at the the world industry in terms of like the military defense or, or, uh, uh, on how they're spending right now, based on the current report, is that the spending is getting larger and larger. I think this is in part of on the part of it is because of the rivalry because uh, between China and uh, United States as well. So I mean we are not technically in war, but the I mean this is important for this country to showcase their capability and their prowess in terms of military power. Uh, so I mean if we're looking at modern warfare and uh, warfare in uh, World War One and World War Two is very different. is is so so much different compared to what happened back in the days. Uh, but it doesn't change that military. Prowess by showing by showing or, or showcasing your military power is part of the, I would say, world politics as well. So if you can have a large military and advanced technology in your defense, uh, I mean, we'll take. I mean, we have some sort of what we call like a, a soft power. In I mean, military itself is a, a hard power, and but if you can showcase it, 
even without utilizing it to in WoW or, or some sort, uh, you're actually projecting a soft power. You're projecting your influence that, hey, this is my region, don't mess up here. So this, I think the, the most recent, even, even close to us, is actually South China Sea, where we see um, yeah. uh, the, the conflict between China claiming the territories uh, and as well of uh, Asian country as well. So there's a lot of things going on there. So one of the ways for China to, uh, to say, hey, <coughs> this is my area, don't, don't mess up here. So basically just sending their, their, uh, their, their military to patrol, uh, to patrol around the area, just to showcase, hey, we have this big ship, we have this technology, we have beasts here, we have, I mean, it's some sort of like projecting, hey, I'm power. I mean, I have power, I have the, the capability to strike you or something sort of like that. And this is projecting to much more. I mean, technically, we are even, even in terms of by land size, we are technically smaller than China. So basically, that's mm -hmm. how yeah, way, way. world politics also, also work. That's why uh, we also have US in the area to just, you know, to keep in check, to, to, to keep China in check. Because I mean, the claim is one thing that, uh, I mean, this is a. I mean, this that's how world policy works. Like, you doesn't necessarily need to be like. Yes, we have discussion, but in the end of the day, if you can showcase how big how big you are, your power is, that's another way to think uh, that hey, we 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 gonna have this territory territory uh, or we gonna strike you something like that. But again, if you look at the modern world, actually going to war is very expensive, and most country doesn't want to go in war. But it doesn't mean that spending in the military is getting lesser. So that's the irony. Even though we are not in war, military spending or defense spending are getting bigger and bigger because more country want to project uh, their powers and want to project their influence to other countries. Yeah, I mean that's that's I think how right now the world depends industry and 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 the situation we can look into it. Yeah. Talking about about the China issue claiming some mm. territories in South China Sea, and then we have this one nosy guy coming in United States. Mm. What is he doing there? Mm. I mean, I mean, that's, well, well, <laughs> that's, that's uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah. When when I mean we are talking about US, uh, uh, I mean there's a lot. I think the first thing is there's a. Uh, how I should put it is is that's important for 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 US to protect their allies, especially the mm -hmm. the uh, when we're talking about Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. So that is basically these three countries is basically US. Uh, how how we say uh, US proxy in order to make sure that uh, to to keep China in check, and the reason why that he coming here is basically to with the excuse that, hey, we just want to, you know, we just want to do exercise with our allies and, and, and yeah, just to showcase that, hey, you are, you are not just the only one in the world that has capability and we can also come and get to you to strike you. So this is, again, it's a how to projecting their, their, their influence to make sure that things is following what they want it to be. So there's a, a I would say, what we call it, um, uh, Interest basically, basically what you ask coming mm -hmm. here is basically just to protect their interest, you know, and that's that's uh, basically every country <clears throat> that try to project their military or defense prowess is basically want they have interest that they want to protect. It's either to their, their allies or with the resources or or territories. Basically, yeah, that's the modern uh, uh, military prowess showcase. Uh, how I would say, uh, uh, place or teach is basically yeah. just showcasing, hey, this is my interest. Don't try to, you know, don't try to disturb it, something like that. Yeah, so that's yeah. I, uh, that's where uh, US can be. Playing. I mean, to be much more detailed on what exactly, there's a lot of things actually. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll just leave it there. Like, I mean, basically, they have allies there that, uh, that basically they have agreement. Yeah. Basically, uh, Especially we were talking about Korea and, 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 and Japan, they are basically they have agreement with, with US that, hey, if anything happened to my country, you, have, you need to send your army to help me out. Especially Japan, because Japan, uh, I mean, after World War II, 
I mean, of course, Japan is being bombed by uh, United States in 1945, 45, is it? The yeah. Nagasaki yeah. and Hiroshima. So yeah. basically what happened is after that, Japanese uh, military is being dismantled, right? Uh, yeah. But the constitution of Japan basically saying you cannot have military, but you can have self-defense force. Self-defense force does mean they mm -hmm. can only be activated when they are being attacked. Yes, attacked. No. Right, right. Yeah. So, but yeah. So basically, since then, if you compare the, the military size of, of Japan is much more smaller compared compared to its yeah, its glory days in terms of like uh, during the empire, right? So, so mm -hmm. basically, if any country try to attack Japan, Japan of course they're gonna respond, but at the same time, U.S. is obligated to actually helping out. Because that's the agreement where they, when U.S. tried to help Japan to rebuild, is that, hey, if you all have, in terms of military, we're going to help you out. So, so that basically they try to keep uh, Japan in check so that they doesn't, they doesn't grow their military prowess again, so that they can keep it mm -hmm. smaller. But in exchange, U.S. going to help, uh, help them out if anything happens. And I think this one is actually the lesson learned from World War II, actually. In World War One, uh, no, no, sorry, World War, uh, the lesson that a lot of country learned oh. from World War One, because as we as we know, in World War One, uh, we look at German. Okay, what happened is yeah. after the uh, end of World War One, uh, German basically being burdened with a lot of debt. They have to rebuild That's the right. country, but at That's the right. same time, also they have to pay uh, compensation into to to to, to the to the winner country basically. So basically, they're being burdened with a lot of debt, so the economy is really struggle. So that's why there's a lot of discontent among this its, its, its uh, citizen. That's giving birth into the uh, uh, figure that we well known today, uh, Adolf Hitler, because the 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 the, the mm -hmm. citizen is really German citizen is really that discontent because they're being yeah. burdened by economy. They cannot really. Uh, uh, how I say the economy doesn't really uh, do well, so all of this because the pressures are being posed to them because they lose the war. That they try to react. I mean, when people put in pressure, they will react, retaliate. So that's what happened in Germany. So yeah. from that, we learned that instead of like try to for to call enslave or like try to pressure <clears throat> the, the the country that lose the war, instead we need to help them build the country back, so that. Yeah. The same thing that happened in Germany doesn't replicate. So that's what I, I mean, in my opinion, that's what they learned in Japan. Mm. So instead of like pressuring the country, so they actually go out and there, try to help it out, try to rebuild it, try uh, helping them to rebuild the country. So instead of like pressuring it, oh, I already go war, I will, uh, I win the, I won the war, you have to pay me for all the costs. Instead of doing that, instead, US are putting out money in, in Japan to help them rebuild. But at the same time, also that's a, in, mm. in terms of political, it's basically like putting. It's again, it's a soft power political. So basically, when you invest in in the in the country, you have interest in there, so the country won't won't dare to go and attack you. So that's that's actually the logic. Because if you look at who, World War Two, actually Japan that first attacked US. That's why US coming to yeah. the war because they attacked the Pearl Harbor. So that's why the US coming coming to 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 to, to World War Two. Basically, they they enter the war. That's really irony. The the country that actually attacked them, that caused them to join the war, is the country that they helped to rebuild uh, after the war ended. So it's, it's really interesting to to see how, how actually the the world policy and military actually coming together in in this like I would say really complex interaction. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess US is not really the bad guy. I mean, depend depend on what aspect that you are looking at. Uh, there's a lot of way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. And how about South Korea? South Korea, like, if I'm not mistaken, mm. uh, the split between North Korea and South Korea mm. is because of the civil war, and then, if I'm not mistaken, so, uh, United States sort of like helping South Korea. Mm. Mm -hmm. We know North Korea, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a similar 
agreement or treaty mm-hmm. where South Korea could not develop their military tech, but mm. yeah, is it the same thing? Okay, uh, I mean, to, to be first, I'm not really sure whether it's similar, but I think in terms of like the military <coughs> development, I think Korea has much more loose, I mean, loose compared to Japan. I think in terms of uh, uh mm. because we have to remember back then, Korea doesn't really go into war because Korea is being occupied by yeah. Japan. So, so technically, oh, yeah. uh, in terms of like, uh, I'm not sure whether US imposed like they Korea cannot develop their own military because I think Korea actually uh, have a, a huge development in their military tech, especially and also their defense because technically, technically they are still in war with North Korea, and you know the, the mm. DMZ, the demilitarized uh, uh, zone. demilitarized zone, right? DMZ. So, yeah. so basically, they are technically still in war because there's no like peace agreement that being achieved yet, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, so, so what happened is they're always in like on standby mode that in case of anything happen, uh, their, their military or Korean military need to be ready. That's why they have the two years uh, mandatory military services for their citizen. As, uh, so, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, <coughs> it's basically just to make sure that their population is ready if any case of emergency happen. Because technically they're still in war with North Korea, and I think wh- why you uh, the US there is actually to have to to actually again to project their uh, influence because you have to remember in terms of geography that North Korea is uh, North Korea sorry the South Korea is actually close to North Korea which is close to China which is close also to Russia, and we go back to yeah. 1970 1960. I mean USSR is there. And is I mean you USSR is known as the you know the the biggest rival back then uh, with US and it also not not about the clash of uh, showing influence also the clash of ideology with socialism socialism and capitalism so that's that's another thing that happened back in the days so one of the way for US to keep Soviet or USSR in check is by putting their military base there. So that they, if anything happened, they can quickly strike uh, the the motherland, and and oh, yeah. So, so basically, yeah, just to yeah, put yeah. the again, it's the same thing on how Soviet actually sending up the the uh, the the missile in Cuba, Cuba. Yeah, I'm not mistaken, yeah. it's Cuba. Yeah, yeah Cuba. Cuba yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing. It's basically just to hey, it's try to do something funny in uh, in my area or to my allies. Yeah. You know, we have. I have missiles in Cuba. I have base in Korea, so it's basically it's something similar. So. Yeah, that's right. And, and talking about uh, this military tech technology mm. around the world, so we have the United States, we have Russia, we have China. We also. I think the ones that are on the rise in terms of not really, not so much on military tech, but uh, certain uh, certain sectors in technology where it could lead to a military, it could contribute to military tech power. It's like now we have India, mm. right? Sure. So it has been a debate, not a debate. It has been um, sort of like a race between especially United States and Russia and China. It has always been a race. I think this first race started since the Cold, Cold War. All right. And even if I'm not sure, uh, but but we didn't really actually go into a, like a crazy, insane physical war, but I'm sure there are people sacrificed in Cold War in terms of espionage and stuff, mm, mm, mm. What, 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 what do you think of this Cold War? I think this Cold War is a perfect example of between two giants showcasing right. their power. All right, all right. I mean, yeah. when you bring about Cold War, I mean, this is actually very interesting, actually. Why? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, 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 of idea that we can discuss on this, but I think if we look at our last episode about space industry, right? So mm-hmm. when we look at Cold War, it's, it's, it's actually just where, where the first space race actually began, which is between mm-hmm. Soviet and United States. 
And what fuel is basically, okay, what will happen in Soviet A, we have this satellite that can go over on top of your country that try to do something funny, we can shoot you from the sky, something like that. So yeah. that's what happened then. When the US learned that, they quickly assemble a team and build uh, and, and to, to counter, basically counter by putting the satellite in the sky as well. So if you look at, into this, uh, what, what Cold War has given to us, especially accelerate the technology development. So actually what mm -hmm. we actually take for granted today, like GPS, like, uh, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, correct, correct, Bluetooth. It's actually, it's trickled down from a military technology from the desire to outdone or outdo your, your rival, like in, in, in this case, in Cold War is US and uh, Soviet, uh, but, uh, but in the end of the day, you accelerate the technology development because when we're talking about warfare is on both sides, what we're thinking is about survival. So when we are in the survival mode, you will try to do so many things. And this thing also applied in World War II where Technology really, really like accelerate really fast if, because if you look at World War, uh, World War One when the British come out with the first tank, and then a year later German will come out with their own tank, uh, their own tank. So the, mm -hmm. the war really accelerate the technology development from you have none of the technology to you have one that you develop locally, and this is showcase that I mean I'm not saying that war is good, but on the other side I mean on the bright side war actually push out the investment in science technology because the need for, for, for a country to survive. So they have to put, they have to push some sort of like, okay, we have to advance our technology in order for us to survive this war. So that's technically uh, what I'm saying. I mean, it's the same thing in, in Cold War. In the end of the day, it's basically, war is actually pushing the science and technology to become much more advanced in order to, to you know, when you have a much more advanced technology, you can project your influence again. Is bring back to the political world, political and 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 yeah, projecting your influence. Yeah. So it's like I feel like the ones responsible for this advancements in technology mm. is coming from people. Oh no, 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 people coming from governments trying to project their influence and oh. power. It's like if we take this government's like person, like people, hmm. it's like ego versus ego. All right. And guys, in the end, it falls down to human nature to, to just be, I'm not sure. Indeed, uh, indeed. You know, but yeah. That's insane. And then, yeah, that's right. Uh, we're not gonna. Uh, it, it is true um, because of war, we have a lot of these uh, new technologies that we now, as as the citizen in any countries, are enjoying. One example is the internet. All right. right. Yeah, the internet. The internet, if I'm not mistaken, was used as a communication mode by the military back in the days, until it was commercialized for. Hakim and I to do this podcast. Correct. Right? And then we have Bluetooth, basically connects my AirPods for us to do this podcast. And Hakim's headphone for us to do this podcast. <laughs> what else do we have? Like, yeah, that's that's the one, uh, that's the two technologies that I'm sure a lot of people are very basically we just cannot live without these two technologies mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. right? right so guys it's insane so <clears throat> would you say this this war thing is your uh, is it right to call this war thing a natural thing mm. for 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 us to grow quickly it's sort of like when uh, we, if we're talking about personal development and stuff, like you need to be under pressure for you to grow. Mm, 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 mm. You need to be out of your comfort zone. So is this the same? Is this is this thing supposed to be natural? Well, whether it's gonna be natural or not, I think it's um it's more into the question of that whether okay. So so for that, is it, war is one of the way that you can accelerate. Uh, the, uh, the advancement of science technology because it's trigger your mm -hmm. 
uh, instinct of survival, right? So, but yeah. war is not the only way that you can trigger this instinct, right? Mm. So, one of the ways is actually rivalry, right? So, like we see right now, China and US, yeah, try to outdo each other in order to showcase that we are, we are the, yeah. the, the world power. We are, we are much more powerful than. Uh, I, I would say what war is, is war is more into the extreme spectrum of it, especially is the, mm. the, the most extreme spectrum that we can go in terms of like competing with each other. So basically what happened is we, we, have, we can have something from the competitive into a war. So war is the, yeah. the, the most extreme version of it. So in terms of uh, what you are saying is like uh, war is not the only way. Uh, by competing with each other, healthy competition also as well. Uh, but in terms of world politics, I'm not sure the world of healthy is going to work. But the idea is that we need to compete. We need to, I mean, the country is not to, to feel that they are, they are in, in some sort of like in institution, we look at North Korea and, and South Korea, it's basically the same thing. They are still technically in war, yeah. but they are not, I mean, they are not like treating each other in the large scale, but they're still, they are still war, it's still happening. So it put pressure on both countries to, to make sure that the military stay uh, at the top of their, 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 their at the peak of their, their capability. So in case of anything happened, mm. they will be prepared. So basically the, the uncertainty that they don't know what's going to happen next, whether who going to be much more powerful, they're going to push as high there as, as, as they can to, to counter to any possibility that's going to happen. So it's basically, okay, we are not sure what the South Korea is going to do. North Korea, okay, let's build our nuclear missile. Worst case, we can just drop it in case. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that's <laughs> what they are saying, but that's the idea, right? That's the idea. Same, same goes to uh, South Korea. Hey, let's build our defense properly. Let's build uh, our uh, uh, anti, uh, anti missile, I know, air defense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Air, air defense that. So, so that worst case, uh, if North Korea, uh, send a new to us, we can mitigate some sort like that. So that's that's how we see it. Because right now, if you look at North Korea and South Korea, basically like they're competing. They are not in war, but they are competing in order to showcase that. They are, they try to mess up with me and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, give a lesson to you, something like that. So, so yeah. the same idea is like, it just war is the most extreme spectrum of it. Yeah, which is- That's right. We don't want that basically. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. So it's like, like, yeah, that's true. Like when, when we both have our own opinions, so we kind of argue, so that's one. All right. And if we really don't don't agree, I might come down to Penang and hit your face. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you can come down to care and hit All my right. face. Okay, that's true. Makes sense. So, yeah. Like talking about this mil uh, war stuff, military tech. So we have a lot of different technologies in military, right? So we have mm -hmm. nucleus. We oh. have this, this uh, what do you call? Missiles that are, are, are rumored to be able to just hover around mm -hmm. for quite some time until, it's, until someone put it, hey, dude, your target is country A. All so right. just immediately from, from the air, hit, it, hit the, the country. And also, we also have tanks. We also have fighter jets. Mm. We also have these new guns mm. uh, and, and all kind of tech. So like, which particular technology is a strong indicator of a country's power? Mm. Interesting, which one technology actually showcasing? Yeah. I think if you actually, if we look at the, the world stage, actually the biggest way mm -hmm. how you can influence certain country is not actually in terms of like projecting your military powers, actually just by projecting your economic powers. And the example that we can look mm -hmm. into is like something like China. You know? Back mm -hmm. then they are the factory of the world. And by being positioned as, a, uh, as the factory of the world, they can have the say that, Okay, we can. We we don't want to give you this product. We cannot. We not going to manufacture this product for you. You have to manufacture it by yourself. So 
basically what happened is because back uh, okay I'm, because back then china uh, labor is very cheap so there are a lot of company that set up a factory there and build their product there so because it's much more cheaper compared to uh, united states of their or, or their own country so by saying that okay you cannot build your product here it will gonna hurt the the, the company and or in, uh, indirectly hurt the country of origin because oh mm. now it's because too expensive the, the company cannot make a sales, the country fail, job losses, people gonna be discontent, the political gonna be uh, uh, in the, the uncertain uh, unrest in political gonna That's be okay. brew. So in the end of the day, uh, I mean yes, by projecting your uh, prowess in terms of like how much damage you can done, how much explosive you can done, but in the end of the day, no country in the world want to have uh, want to get into war because what happened is. It's gonna cost them a lot. It's very expensive. War is freaking expensive, and it's mm. gonna the people gonna be discontent with them. So most country doesn't want to go into war. So instead, what the modern warfare is much more by economic influence. Okay, if you try to mess up with me, I'm gonna mm. cut tight. I'm gonna boycott you. And this way, I can see with Russian as well, right? So what yeah. what happen is they are being boycotted for 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 inter international trade. So. Basically, yeah. this is the way that you are saying that, hey, try to mess up with me. I'm going to make sure that your economy works and then make sure your, your people are unrest with you. And then you're gonna, they're going to throw you out, something like that. So yeah. in the end of the day, it's actually not a technology that, and I mean, in modern warfare, it's not a technology that's going to be the main thing. It's actually the, the technology is going to be your, your front face, actually. It's just a... You know, just to, 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 to be your, your front store to show, hey, we are powerful. But behind this, actually, what much more powerful is really the economic powers. If you have the control mm -hmm. over a certain country, certainly this, uh, the leader of the country doesn't want to mess up with you. If you are bringing a lot of job to them, if you bring a lot of foreign investment to the country, if you try to go war with the, this country, of course, you're gonna, first, you have to pay for the war. It's very expensive. And then... You can, your economy going to go down. This country won't give you foreign investment anymore. And your country going to be failing. So that's, that's, I would say, it's not, the, it's not the defense technology that's going to be important in the modern warfare. It's much more in the uh, pressure that you can put to certain country. And most likely, the biggest one is right now is the economic uh, pressure. Mm. And, and, and in this modern warfare, who do you think is sleeping? I, I mean, it's hard to say because, um, uh, I mean, of course, I, I mean, if we look at and into uh, military spending, of course, United States going to have the biggest military spending uh, up to, yeah. I think, even into the latest 2020, yep, even to 2020 report, you are still the largest spending. But of course, China is also behind uh, US, uh, not far away. And then we also have Russia, of course, <laughs> the, the former Soviet country as well. And I mean, like you say, these three countries, the, the, the three big guy, and also we have India and Pakistan as well. So if you look at that, yeah. it's basically uh, what happened is that who are leading, I'm not really sure. But in terms of the big, big two, I think, not big two, I think this big three, China, US, and Russia are leading in the uh, industry, I would say, in the defense industry, because they, right now they are helping out other countries to uh, build up their defense system as well, by, by sharing their technology, by selling up their, 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 their uh, jet fighter, by selling their uh, weaponry, basically, that's one way how you can project your influence. For example, right, for example, Iran buy Russian S-400, for example, right, until, uh, well, I forgot already, uh, Anti-air, anti-air anti defense system. Yeah, so it's portable anti-air defense system. Yeah, S four hundred. So what happened is okay when Iran buy this technology from Russia. What happened at they get they won't. So the moment they purchase it, most likely they won't go. They will not go war with Russia because hey, this guy yeah. that provide me the weaponry. Of course, they know in and out about the technology about the weapon that we have. If we go to war with them. That's disadvantage. The first that the first advantage. Uh, disadvantage is that your enemy know your military system really well. Yeah. So most likely they. So so that's that's from the Iran side. But on the Russian side, they're just saying, okay, this 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 country is good. 
doesn't have to worry about them already. They're already buying from yeah. us. And they're going to, going to need us for the next 10 years at least. When you buy certain yeah. technology, probably more than 10 years actually. When you buy certain technology, for example, if you buy tanks or maybe you buy uh, a rifle or maybe you, you are buying like S400. Fighter jets. Fighter jets. In the end of the day, you still need a technician technically from that country of origin in order to help you. You know, if anything happens, something broken, you need support, something like that. It's same if you look at the country, like if you are buying car, for example, right? If you want to get support, you go to the company, right? So it's the same thing. When the yeah. country buys it from, from one country, in every day, the, the country that sells it is going to provide support. And and of course, the country that buy it won't go the war with the uh, country that sells this yeah. uh, this weapon away. So in you know, that's another uh, how to actually project your power as well. So the moment a country buy your military tech, you doesn't have to worry about them technically. Lah. Technically, you doesn't have to worry about them attacking you. So one less potential problem. Yeah, like like you're talking about you're talking about the Lockheed Martin uh, helicopter that's mm. using electric. I think it's something called Raider or something, right? Raider. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Raider X. Raider, Raider. X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 helicopters inspired by dragonflies. All right. But in the end, it's back to nature. So in the end, guys, it's back to nature. <laughs> God, God is the one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And then and then. So if the military guys are going electric, uh, then I would say Malaysians, the Malaysian government have to go electric as well. And, yeah. and, mm. and how far off are we from there? I mean, I mean, if you're talking about how far we are from there, I'm not really sure um, because we doesn't have access to clarify information about that. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> what the plan is. But yeah. it's true that the, the trend is there, and uh, some might be worried about okay, this technology is being uh, this will be electric uh, powered uh, helicopter for defense. Uh, but it's either we develop our own or either we buy from certain country. That's one of two options, yeah. right? Or both, even both at the same time, could be something like that. Right? Also depend on our positioning. Like for example, in Malaysia, we have a position if. I mean, okay, um, this was my speculation, but in any case that the country try to attack Malaysia, for example, right, I just want to going to come and help us because our strategic location, because if country try, a country try to attack us, it's going to disturb the economy, the, 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 That's right. the shipping, uh, what we call it, the uh, shipping route, right? Shipping. right through, yeah. through the yeah. Malacca Street and then through Singapore. So if a country try to yeah. attack us or try to occupy, us, it's going to be a disadvantage for the country that going to do economic deals with other countries, for the from the west to the east, right? So yeah. we are in a position if anyone try to uh, attack us, other country going to some sort of like try to get uh, try to deter this because it's going to affect the economy. So even though they're not in the war, if someone try to attack us, it's going to affect that. It's going to affect the economy, right? So. Either, either, I mean, we are, I would, I would say, I would say it's lucky that we are fortunate we have in the, a good position that if anyone try to attack us, that like we're in a position to, we have bugging. Okay, let's say, some, okay, this one is uh, hypothetical, but let's say Russia attack us, you can simply say to China or even say to, yes, hey, Russia is attacking us. If they attack us, they're going to impose tax into your shipping or route or something like that. We're going to hurt your economy. If you can help us, we're going to give you some sort of something like that. Uh, so in the end of the day, we have this position that we can, uh, what we call, um, uh, tali -tali. Sorry, uh, uh, so like, yeah, 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 yeah. but what happened is in Malaysia, what we need to do actually, we just have to really, I mean, yes, we need to develop our own military technology, but at the same time, I would say, if we can play our advantage in terms of our geographic strategy, we can try to balance out this power. So Korea or China, oh, sorry, uh, Russia or China won't try to, bot, try to, to catch out us because if they try to disturb us, you are going to come over, going to come into the, kind of into the equation. So when this three in the equation yeah. is going to be messy, so it's going to be messy. Yeah. So all these three doesn't want to be in one equation at the same time. 
because they know it's going to be messy. Yeah. So what like, we can do is basically try to balance out the equation. It's like you're putting three alphas in in one ring. Correct, 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 correct. correct. So yeah. if then if so of course, all these three doesn't want to be in one ring, if you ask me, they want to go yeah. to their own ring. They want to have their own ring. But if they try to come to our region, try to impose, yeah, we can put them in one ring. So are we so more that, that's now? another advantage that we should have. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that's, I mean, it, it, let's say I'm asking you, so like the, I mean, okay, because in the end of the day, right, uh, mm -hmm. if someone, at, let's say a country attack uh, Malaysia, what do you think the, the, what's going to happen? I mean, in terms of like uh, the sequencing of things that are going to, going to happen, where do you think Malaysia going to join? Well, it depends on, on what countries that, that's going to yeah. attack Malaysia, I guess. And then I, I, I would say most likely, most likely uh, the Russian government might be going to be mm. helping us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, plus we have this, uh, what do you say, we have, we have stories about SpaceX. And actually, the Russian government also mm. uh, reached out to Indonesia to, 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 be, uh, to build a, space, uh, a launch pad back in 2002. Mm. Right. And also, uh, Malaysia's, Malaysian government and Russian government have, have had long ties way before. Before we have ties with China, economical ties, mm. we have uh, uh, diplomatic ties with Russia. Uh, with, with the US government, I'm not so sure. Um, we do have ties with US government, but I think Russian government is a big power. First big power tie that we had. Oh. I may be wrong. I may be right. I'm not sure. Right. This is, yeah. And also because I was I was sent to Russia to study aerospace and stuff. Uh, now we have Malaysian students studying nuclear engineering in in Russia. Uh, and then uh, the uh, previous uh, last year, uh, Russian president and our our past uh, prime minister uh, Tun Mahathir signed another agreement to, to for the Russian government to help us build uh, our uh, aerospace uh, industry, aerospace sector from education level. So I would say if someone attacked Malaysia, uh, Russian government would be the one uh, in the first, will be you will be among the top three lists like the Malaysian government is gonna call for help. Uh, uh, uh. And if, 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 if someone do attack us, wow, this is beyond imagination. I mean, we, we're lucky, <laughs> we, we are lucky that we are not involved in any wars because Legit, I cannot imagine huh. the real physical sequence in my head. Like, it's scary. I yeah, can't. I mean, yeah, I mean, war is, I mean, it's unim unimaginable. I mean, in our generation, we doesn't, does not experience that. But uh, yeah, really. that's, but in your world, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, deny the possibility that war is still going to happen, one way or another. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that's very interesting that. Uh, I mean, if you are saying about that, no, I mean, we, when we are talking about, okay, Russia could be first come to aid, uh, to Malaysia, if anything like military conflict happen in our country, then let's say what we discussed last episode, right? So Elon Musk setting up in Indonesia, that's going to oh, of yeah. attract the United States in the region as well. And that's right. Uh, I mean, there's, uh, there's only two countries in the world that doesn't want U.S. to project more power in ASEAN country, which is Russia and China. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I say, uh, I would, it's still as like, a basis on it. Like, if 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 actually if if SpaceX even uh, is actually developing the space industry here, you uh, you Russian want to get a piece uh, a piece of the cake. So, 
so they might choose Malaysia instead. And this is back to our topic from last episode that, hey, I mean, even though SpaceX invests in Indonesia, it's going to attract another foreign investment from other countries as well. So in this case, I say we can speculate that even Russian company going to come to Malaysia to, to setting up because Indonesia has been taken by SpaceX. So they cannot do the business there because it's going to have a conflict of interest uh, among the government uh, uh, with the government. So that's a rather interesting thing that we can uh, uh, angle that we can look into that. Yeah, probably I think we um, are yeah, most likely will be Russian. China, I, I'm not really sure whether they are really interested. If you ask me, China is much more interested to gaining their glory days, uh, mm -hmm. to establish again their, their empire rather than conquering. I think, okay, this is my, will be my personal opinion, but China is much more keen into regaining their glory, their former land. What I, what I mean by former land is the land where in, in the empire of China, they occupied where they then go and conquer. I think if you look at ASEAN, uh, country that like, we don't really like conquer out each other but we are more like yeah. projecting power yeah. influence to each other if you look at even in even the in ancient time china and even malay peninsula is like i mean we we don't really like go war well with them but instead we have a diplomatic tie with them right so i think if you look at the culture like asia is much more into like okay we have our own country we don't want to because i, I mean occupying occupying a country take a lot of resources by the end of the day mm -hmm. we want to have our our home secure and we have uh interaction or, or uh, influence with other country so that's i mean if you look at history i mean i'm not saying that uh, asian country doesn't conquer each other but uh that we don't really go out like what happened in europe europe for example europe if you read history you know that they are conquering each other over and over over and over, over again Right, so a lot of more. Yeah. But compared to us, yeah, we are much more. I think we are more diplomatic in terms, in, term, in, in the sense of like, uh, rather than go to war, we prefer to go diplomatic way. Uh, and one of the reasons probably because we are, I mean, especially in uh, ASEAN region, we have a lot of sea around us, and so instead of going to war with each other, we just have a, a economic trade, uh, trading, trading, trading relationship with each other, which is much more efficient for us. Again, this back to the equation that. Economic can actually be much more powerful weapon compare your mm -hmm. tight core uh, uh, weaponry system, right? So that's right. yeah, that's 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 I think uh, what we see in ASEAN. So China is much more interested in keeping their home safe, and probably what they're interested in right now is uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong, of course, is which we claim their ancient territory. So but I think in terms of projecting power. Russia, I mean, if I'm, 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 I think probably you learn about it, how Moscow from a small uh, empire down. into the breaking, they completely taking over the, the northern region of Asia, uh, a continent up until Alaska, even Atlantic Ocean doesn't stop there. They go yeah. for the, until the Alaska, right? Before, before, yeah, in, uh, by, right. before they sell it into United States. Again, they start from yeah. a small empire, and just because what happened to right okay, this from my reading that because all the Europe uh, uh, European power tried to conquer their city, so they tried to establish their own military, that expand, 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 and go further to the to the east, and ultimately just getting all over the region. And one thing yeah. that I I I read is that instead of like attacking a for example if a, a uh, slave people when I mean back then where the slave people try to uh, expand their territory what happened is they asked mm -hmm. the ind indigenous people that in the region that hey do you want to join us or we're gonna attack you yeah but the first thing they're gonna ask is right. you do you want to join us that's the first thing and most likely all the tribe all the indigenous people want to join them because it gives them the security that being an empire so other because they are small tribe if you're small uh, if you're a small that's tribe right. compared to big empire of course Small tribe is much more easier targets, but if you are in in um an, an empire, people are gonna affect to attack you because the whole empire is gonna be your enemy, right? So that's right. When when Slavic people actually expanding is basically they're saying, hey, join us or later we attack you, something like that. So they expand <laughs> until Alaska. You know, us. I mean, at the that's, end, that's and then, then 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 they have this like Atlantic Ocean. There, it doesn't stop there. The Atlantic Ocean doesn't stop. They go through the Alaska to conquer the the, the place. The editor has to put a map in this video later on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very interesting, 
uh, I mean, I'll say uh, like what happened in Europe basically that they they attack each other and then what happened is they trigger the you know, Russian people, Soviet people to expand their territory because in the the ultimate goal is they want to have this physical barrier, the mountain, mm -hmm. the, the the plane to make sure that everything is secure. Anything happen, they can secure their their their, their, their capital, right? I don't know what it, Moscow. I don't, I don't know the, the ancient name for Moscow, Moscow or something like that. Uh, so back uh, from that to, yeah. to 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 country that yeah. we have right now, the the big Russian right now, right? So, uh, yeah, that's that's how I would say they. So for Russian people, they they always have this like conquering. I would say <laughs> conquering thing. I was uh, I'm not sure how to say they put it right, but let's say uh <laughs> they have a conquering uh vision but they, I think I think their conquering is much more to secure the homeland rather than try to project their power but now in order to secure let's like, say like, again if US try to attack us or Russia most likely going to come to aid because it's going to impose a problem to their economy with right now with the US mm -hmm. boycott as well so yeah it's going to be a complex situation and it yeah is. I will say that's really interesting to see how it's going to happen or fall out I think I think Slavic people are just <laughs> they are yeah. just they're just they're just alpha or something <laughs> like <laughs> they are just very straightforward. They don't have tolerance for bullshit. <laughs> like re really, that's true. Like I've been <laughs> I've been I've been there <laughs> four years of my life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be bleep. <laughs> but it's yeah they're fucking alpha they're just they're just straightforward and i respect that like um in most situations being straightforward or being alpha or um, in most situations get you places where you want mm. but also in russia you see a lot of fights in public and it's normal like people just fight. <laughs> that's that's the that's the cons of it, right? Mm, 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 mm. But yeah, like how until now Putin is still the president and everyone loves Putin. Everyone loves yeah. Putin. Yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone loves Putin. And 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 and, and uh, I I I talk to my friends, my Russian friends, and they say that you know the perception that the Russians have on Putin is. You know, if we lose Putin, Who gonna? the world is not going to be afraid of us anymore. Mm, mm. Technically, yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Putin is a symbol of power <laughs> that should be accounted into Russian's military power. <laughs> <laughs> he himself is power, bro. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and it and I I I wish we don't go to war. Maybe a different kind of war. <laughs> no. I don't know. Espionage, like espionage, has been going on for for the longest for, time as we know it. Forever, it's been coming. Forever. Yeah. yeah. And, and now I'm not sure what kind of war do we have. It could be this information warfare. Oh, yeah, don't information you think? warfare, correct. Uh, information warfare where other countries are start meddling into other countries' democratic system. Mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like how the stories about President Trump. Also, there was also stories about our elections yeah i also heard about that's that the, yeah but you know let's let let's uh behind the scene right yeah Don't behind the scene okay. i mean if you <laughs> want to dig out that we i mean us also yeah. have cia they have messing out with a lot yeah. of region in the world also that we don't want to dig out on that but then yeah every country has yeah espionage yeah yeah <laughs> and information warfare all right all right well, yeah. I guess it's been like how many? It's quite long. Yeah, I think maybe we can do part two. 
maybe yeah. we can maybe next time we can we can really break down into the type of warfare so we can talk about it. wow wow right? wow, wow. That, that would be interesting really interesting yep yep yeah all right all right do you have spell. anything else okay yeah i think that's it on my side yeah me too okay guys that's it enough talking about wars let's have fun <laughs> and enjoy your life while you can <laughs> while you can oh yeah and also don't forget to like our video to comment if you have any uh, a suggestion or topic for us to discuss like for me only right to discuss yeah. and maybe in the future we're going to get all our, our other team member to also come into this uh, uh right. conversation as well uh so it won't be just me and Leroy, right <laughs> uh yeah. and yeah do do like and share our video as well if you like it and share it with your friends and yeah if you're interested to, just to write us a comment about your opinion about the modern warfare and where do you see i mean like our question earlier that if malaysia go to war so what's going to happen if you guys can comment your opinion below so that we can we can read yeah. it and maybe we can have a shout out to you on our next episode yeah exactly exactly all right guys thank you so much for listening enjoy while you can outro in russian Uh, я не знаю, что сказать, но ну да. Ну давайте, ребят, uh, не надо uh, поступать в войне. Понятно? Uh, война это плохо. Uh, жизнь это, это, это важно. Я не знаю. <laughs> да, вот так. И все. Давай, ребят. Пока. У меня нет uh, идеи. Пока, пока, пока.